The Department of Justice is now challenging a restrictive Texas abortion law that bans abortions after six weeks. Filing suit in federal court claiming it is unconstitutional. This comes after the Supreme Court declined to block the Texas law. Well, now some Florida lawmakers say they want to pass a Florida version of that Texas abortion law. The state Senate president says he would be open to considering it. And one House member says he is ready to introduce his own version of the bill. That state rep is Anthony Sabatini, a Republican from Lake County. We tried to get him on our show last week, but there he is, Representative Sabatini. Welcome. We are glad to be able to speak with you this morning. Thanks for having me on. And also on with us is State Representative Robin Bartleman of Broward County, formerly served on the Broward School Board. Robin, good to see you again. Thanks. Good morning. Good to see you. All right, so Representative Sabatini, uh, a Quinnipiac uh, University poll recently found that 68% of Floridians support legal abortion, including 46% of Republicans. Uh, why does Florida need a, 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 a law as stringent as the one in Texas that virtually bans nearly all abortions? Well, it's an ambiguous poll because it doesn't define what legal abortion is or at what point people feel comfortable cutting off abortion. Uh, most Americans are divided on, on the issue. Most people do have differing opinions about it. I think the heartbeat bill is really a great compromise bill because it, at the end of the day, uh, still allows some choice, but at the end of the day stops abortions in most circumstances when somebody is aware that they're pregnant. And so uh, I believe, you know, that uh, life begins at conception. I'd like to see the uh, needle moved to an earlier period than exists under law currently. And I think a lot of Floridians do. And I think it's a moral decision that a lot of people support. So that's why we'll be filing the bill. One thing that's interesting in what you just said there, you said in some circumstances. So you did try to file something similar in the past two legislative sessions. It didn't really gain a lot of traction coming out of committee. In this upcoming bill that you say you intend to file, will there be exemptions for things like rape, incest, and a medical exemption? Yes, most Floridians agree that there should be exemptions. So although this bill that I'll file is a mirror copy of the Texas bill, the three exceptions that mo exemptions that most Americans and Floridians agree with will be included in it. So that would be the minor difference. Yeah. Representative Bartleman, thanks again for joining us. One thing I wanted to note is on Twitter, you described the Texas law as being draconian. You said you were mortified by it. But interestingly, in your thread, you nestled those comments within a very personal experience that you shared about an appreciation you said you had at a time that you were a woman with a right of a parental choice to consider terminating um, an early term pregnancy, in, in your words, because there were some fetal abnormalities. You said that the pregnancy wound up terminating itself. But I was curious to see how much does that personal experience you have with this issue, one of the factors that maybe ground your position on this? Um, I have to say that that was probably one of the most traumatic experiences in my life. Um, that was a much wanted pregnancy. As a matter of fact, I went through infertility treatments to, to get that pregnancy. And I was told that I had uh, fetal abnormalities and that I would have to make a decision. It was heart wrenching. Every day I went home, I cried. I didn't know what to do. I was a special education teacher. So many thoughts went through my mind. And in the end, yes, the pregnancy did terminate itself. But every day I am grateful that I had the ability to make that decision. I believe now more than ever that it's a woman's choice whether or not to carry a pregnancy at a term. I believe it's a decision between her, her doctor, her family, and her faith. And nobody else should be uh, making that decision for, for me. So it definitely grounds me in my decision. I feel incredibly strong about this. And not only that, you know, what would have happened is the fetus may have terminated later on in the pregnancy, uh, after birth, there, it, it was incompatible with life. Yeah, Representative so, Sabatini, and, and, uh, I beg your pardon, Representative Parliament. Let, let me just get Representative Sabatini in. You know, uh, Representative Sabatini, what your colleague here in the House, basically, I think the fundamental baseline here is don't tell me what I can do with my body. I'm a woman. It is my decision to make. Is it not? 
Uh, well, what she's describing, and I think it's a valid, you know, issue is the times in which you're having an abortion, a person is having, uh, considering getting an abortion and there's health issues either for the child or for the mother. When, of course, you brought up some of the other exceptions to the traditional abortion situation. Great majority of cases, it's a perfectly healthy uh, person that's within the mother. And so that's what we want to decrease. We want to decrease abortions of um, babies that are completely, totally fine. And there's no issue with the mother. There's no issue with the child. There was no rape. There was no incest. All of those cases combined generally only take place in, I think, one or two or maybe 3% total, all of those types of exceptions. So I'm focused on the great number of abortions that happen for no reason other than the fact that a person simply doesn't want to carry the baby to term and, and uh, give it to adoption if they don't want to carry it. Representative uh, but I Sabatini. do believe that it is murder at that, age, at that young age of six weeks. It does have a heartbeat. That's why the title of the bill is the heartbeat bill. I don't think a person should be aborted if they have a heartbeat. It doesn't matter if they're born or not. Representative Sabatini, when we're talking about some of the other reasons why uh, some young women or women may decide to have this choice or they want to hold on to a right to make a parental choice for early term ad uh, abortion, according to the state agency that warehouses and collects data on abortions, one of the top reasons cited is actually social or economic reasons. And I was curious to see if you had any thoughts about maybe filing a companion piece of legislation that maybe tackles some of those deeper issues that might underpin a reason why someone wants to terminate a pregnancy. So perhaps it includes things like, you know, paid family leave, or maybe there's something in there tackling um, early childhood education or food insecurity uh, within certain segments of our of our society. So that way, that life that you're fighting so hard for really has an opportunity for a strong start. Um, yeah, so we have socialized medicine in this country. We have a lot of social services. We have uh, a lot of things that exist already. I don't think anyone should be making the decision of whether they get an abortion based on um, on that. I think it should be given to adoption if the person doesn't want to have an doesn't want to carry the uh, child up and rear the child and raise the child. I think they should consider adoption. There's a line of people that want to adopt a child, and so I just think it's wrong. Those are the wrong kind of factors. But you know, once again, it's really a bit of a red herring. It's uh, trying to sidestep around the issue of whether a perfectly healthy child, perfectly healthy mother, whether a person should be able allowed to kill uh, a person who has a heartbeat that's carried within them um, for no reason other than the fact that I think, as you mentioned, maybe okay. the, whether you, they're you, going to be able to get more yeah, social representative, services. Representative Sabatini, you, you certainly made your point. We get it. Representative Bartleman, one of the factors that allowed the Supreme Court apparently to go ahead and let the Texas law stand was this curious enforcement method where any citizen, any citizen, not just in Texas, can sue anybody who provides what is considered an illegal abortion and then get paid $10,000. Uh, doesn't that sort of set up a bounty system for this? It sets up vigilante justice and imagine if other laws were enforced that way. But I, I wanna comment on what the representative said about life. This country is founded on personal religious beliefs. When life occurs, is it, it depends on who you are. It depends on your personal beliefs. It depends on your religion. A ban on abortion at six weeks, six weeks of uh, pregnancy is basically an outright ban. Most women do not know they're pregnant at six weeks. And people with uteruses know that periods are irregular. It's only 35 days after your last period. And so basically saying, well, six weeks is enough time, you're basically eliminating all, all abortion, eliminating a woman's right to choose. And, I, and I, I just wanna point this out because I'm not a medical doctor, but I, I wanna read this quote because when he uses the term heartbeat, can I just when he uses the term heartbeat, as a gynecologist, Dr. Jennifer Gutner explains yeah. that at six weeks of fetal development, 
there is no heart that beats. Instead, there is detectable activity within a four yeah. millimeter wide growth known as a fetal pulse. And I he's entitled to his religious but, but belief. We are but you can't share that. Robin Bartleman, Anthony Sorry, Sorry thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate your time this morning.